You know how all these companies post these videos of 3D models of their products integrated into real life footage? Well, turns out that shit is actually pretty easy to make. So I'm going to walk you through how you can do this yourself today. And here's a couple of videos to show you what I'm talking about. These are made by a friend of mine. He does this shit professionally and he does it pretty good. Now we're going to need a couple of other programs. Blender is not going to be enough because as you know, camera tracking in Blender is shit. So we're going to have to use a little bit of Adobe After Effects. We're going to have to use a little bit of Adobe Premiere Pro. We're also going to have to get some stock footage and it might sound complicated to you now, but trust me, it's pretty easy to do and it's also a pretty useful skill to have. So you're gonna be able to make some pretty cool marketing content by the end of this video. So let's get started. So we're gonna have to start with a video. We're gonna have to have a video into which we're going to integrate the 3D footage. Now you could go outside, you could go to your local mall with your camera, or you can go shooting videos all day. But if you don't wanna do that, if you just wanna test this shit out really quickly, you can just go to some website like pexels.com or any other stock footage website. This one's free, you probably just have to make an account. And then in the search options here, you switch from photos to videos. And now you just search for something like building and it's gonna come up with a bunch of videos of buildings in a city. Ideally, you wanna find something where it's not moving too much, it's sort of focusing on one target. If you're just starting this out, you want to avoid things like zooming in, zooming out very hard. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to track these things. If there's a lot of moving parts, if there's a lot of reflections, it might be a little bit more difficult to track. So I took this video right here. It's pretty simple. It's just a drone flying around a fucking skyscraper and it's focusing on the skyscraper the entire time. So it's pretty simple. Some videos are going to work better than others, but this one worked pretty good. So you can just download it over here for free. And then you got to get yourself a program like Adobe After Effects. Now, Adobe After Effects is a paid program, but I know half of you are unbothered by this shit anyway so you're going to be able to find a way to get this program even if you don't want to pay nothing just don't tell them i said that so you open up a new project and then you find the folder where you downloaded your pexels video so mine is right here you drag and drop that into adobe after effects once you got it up here then you want to go down here and drop it into your timeline once you got it in your timeline then you go over here to the side where you got effects and presets you're going to search for camera tracker you're going to find this effect over here called 3d camera tracker just drag and drop that onto this bar down here in the timeline and then you got to wait for him to process this shit for a couple minutes you also want to go over here to advanced you want to check detailed analysis and you can see the progress up here as you can see we're on frame 8 9 10 out of 406 so we got to wait a couple minutes in the meantime we got to get some add-ons so we have to get one add-on for adobe after effects which is going to allow us to export this shit so we can use it in blender and then we're going to have to get a blender add-on which is going to allow us to import this shit into blender so we can use it in blender so I'm going to give you this link in the description. You're going to have to download this thing called export composition data to json.jsx. And you're also going to have to download After Effects to Blender import.zip. So make sure you download those two. When you download the zip file, you're going to have to extract it. There's going to be three files in there. You want the Python file. So the files look like this. You're going to want to use this first one in Blender, but we're going to get back to that in a couple of minutes. And then once After Effects is through analyzing the footage, now you go over here to track point size. You're going to increase that a little bit so you can see them. Now, by default, when you play the video in the timeline, you're not going to see the trackers but you can go up here and render track points and then they're going to be visible even when you play the footage and now you just have to select a couple of frames on an area where you want to integrate a 3d model so for example i'm going to select an area over here on this side of the building and you want to try to avoid selecting markers on curved surfaces or on weird angles and shit like that because that's going to confuse the program for example up here it'll be a little bit more difficult because we have these pillars here and then you can see them in the back then you can't see them so the trackers are appearing and disappearing the whole time so just to keep it simple we're going to select this flat surface over here on the right side of the building and once you select those you're going to go right click and click on create solid and camera and that's going to give you a plane which is going to be fixed onto this surface now i know it looks a little bit crooked right now and that's fine even if it's not perfectly aligned with the surface it still is tracked to the surface so you can see as the camera moves the plane is moving along with the building and now this is where we have to install the add-on for exporting the setup so first of all make sure you save your file because you're going to have to restart after effects and then you go up here to file you go down here to scripts and you click on install script file and then you find the script file on your computer then you have to restart adobe after effects and once you restart it then once again you go up here to file you go down to scripts and in scripts you're going to have this button right here called export composition data to json now before you do that you have to make sure to select all these tracks down here because otherwise it's not going to export all the data you need for this shit so select them all and then you go up here to file scripts export composition data in this little menu you pick the folder where you want to export it then you export it and once you export it now you got to go into blender and now we're going to install the fucking blender add-on so you have to go up here to edit preferences you go to the add-on section but we first have to install this add-on from our computer so you click on this little arrow here you're going to find install from disk and then again you find this shit on your computer and by the way the information i gave you earlier about installing just a python file was wrong you want to install the entire zip file so you click on that install from disk and it's going to appear in your add-on section over here you just got to search 
for import and there it is right there import after effects composition now we got it ready to go and then you want to delete everything that you have in your scene by default so select everything get rid of it then you go to file you go to import you click on after effects composition data and here we got our building tracking dot json so you click on that to import it and in the beginning you're going to get a bunch of weird shit in your scene it doesn't really seem to make any sense but if you play the animation you're going to see the camera moving here so this is a simulation of the camera from the video which we analyzed in after effects and this here is that plane which we generated based on those tracking markers i don't really know the purpose of this plane right here but you can see that at a certain point this plane is exactly covering the camera frame and i think this frame right here is the exact frame where our marker was placed when we exported this footage from after effects so again i don't know the purpose of this shit but it's there anyway i don't want to delete it in case we're going to need it for something later so i'll just inset it and delete the vertices on the inside and now we just have an invisible frame so we still know where it is but it's not bothering us and another thing i fucked up i should have told you this before but before you import this you have to make sure that your frame rate in your blender file is the same as the frame rate of the video in after effects so i'm gonna have to do this again because my default frame rate is 30 fps so i'm gonna undo a couple of steps to before i imported this and then over here in the output settings we changed the frame rate to 24 because that was the frame rate of my video and now when you play the animation it's gonna work a little bit better now here's what you gotta do next you're gonna select everything and you're gonna see you got a bunch of keyframes down here now in blender the footage starts from frame zero but it's supposed to start from frame one based on the footage that we got from after effects so you want to select everything in your scene select all the keyframes and then press g1 and then you just move everything to the right by one frame and it's going to work a little bit better now check this out you're going to select your camera go to camera view and currently we can't see the video but we have to see the video so you're going to go over to your camera settings in your camera settings you're going to find background images check that add image over here we don't want a still image we want a movie clip and guess what movie clip we're going to import here so open the file right here and now as the camera moves the video is always in the background so we can see our 3d models here and we can see the video in the background currently the opacity is only halfway so you want to crank that shit up to one and now when you play your animation you're going to see we got the video and we got the plane fixed to the building now as i said to you before this plane is a little bit crooked right now so you might have to adjust it a little bit i recommend you adjust it in object mode so you also change the object's local axes in this case i'm going to rotate mine around the local z axis just a little bit i'm also going to edit it in edit mode a little bit by sliding this edge inwards a little bit and we can just make sure that it's going to be properly aligned so we might have to do some more rotation here as well to make sure it's aligned up here you might want to rotate it around the local y-axis you want to play around with it a little bit until you get it right and there you go now you can do whatever you want with it in this scene now i'm going to show you how you can set up something really simple and then you can spend more time playing around with it and trying to make something a little bit cooler than what i'm going to make today so we're going to start with this plane right here we're going to scale it up a little bit so it covers this part of the building and just remember when you try to model this plane you always want to move stuff around the local axes of that object if you just move it on the global z axis you can see it doesn't really follow the lines of the building so you have to follow the rotation of this object so you double press z for example and then you move it along that z axis and then it's just going to be aligned a little bit better so i want something like this for now then we're going to extrude it backwards and we're going to delete this plane over here in the front so now we have a room fixed to our building now the problem is that we can see the wall and the sides of the room from the outside we don't want to see those so here's how you cover that shit up we're going to take these edges from the outside here in edit mode extrude those scale them up a little bit like this so now we have this new set of faces here which is hiding the outside of this room and you want to separate this to new object by selection and you take that new object we're going to go to render view here i'm using ev for now because it's just a little bit faster you can do this in cycles too let's add an area light to the inside of the room just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better we're going to turn up the power and i'll take this outer object which we made you're going to go over to the shading tab you add a new material you get rid of the principal bsdf node instead you add a holdout node you plug that into surface right here and now this plane becomes invisible but everything behind that plane also becomes invisible so now we can see the inside of this room but we can't see the walls on the outside so that's pretty good and this is where you can start trying to make this look a little bit cuter so now for example we can take this room we can add a new material we can make it metallic and shiny we can try adding a fucking monkey to the inside to see what's gonna happen i don't want to do monkey let's do something a little bit cooler i'm gonna import that perfume bottle that i made in that perfume video the other day if you haven't seen that go check it out i'll put a link in the description so i'm gonna go up here to file i'm gonna go to append because that allows me to take an object from another blender file and put it into this one you find your blender file here's my perfume file you go over here to object and then you find the object which you want to import so i want to import the fucking perfume bottle and there you go now we got a perfume bottle of course we're gonna have to go to cycles to make this look a little bit better so we switch from ev to cycles and now we got a perfume bottle inside the building now you can make some animations so maybe you can make a door on the back side which is going to open up and then this perfume bottle comes out so maybe the perfume bottle starts out here insert keyframe and then on frame 60 we're going to make it come out in front of the building like this maybe we make it do a little spin or something so now when you play the animation now the perfumes bottle spinning it's coming out you can do a bunch of different shit with this stuff i don't want to make this a product animation video because otherwise 
right? It's gonna last seven hours. Nobody's gonna wanna watch that shit. I think you guys understand how you can do this yourself now. Now, once you make your animation and you're ready for exporting, if you just go up here to render image or render animation, you're not gonna see the background image, but the surface behind the holdout plane is gonna be invisible. So you can see this is transparent, but the environment is not transparent and we can't see the background image. I don't know if there's an option which allows you to render the video from the background with the animation, but I know how to render this animation with a transparent background. And then later on in a video editor, we can place that over the video. So to do that, you have to go up here to render properties. You go down to film and in film, you're going to find transparent. And if you check that now, when you render image, everything except the objects in the scene is going to be transparent. So now we can render this as PNG images, and then we can place that on top of this background video in a video editing program. So go to your output properties, make sure your output resolution matches the resolution of the video. So in this case, I think it's 1080p, 24 frames per second. You pick your output folder. You want to set the file format here to PNG. That means we can render images with transparent backgrounds. You also want to activate the alpha channel because otherwise you're not going to get no transparent background. And once you do that, you go up here to render animation and Blender is going to render out the individual frames of this animation. And while this is rendering, let me hit you with a little commercial break. So check this shit out. I'm going to make this quick because we don't got all day. But if you want to learn to create a professional full fucking industry standard advertisement type of animation in Blender from scratch, like what you can see right now, I made a full course modeling, texturing, animating, lighting, music, everything you can check it out. There's a link in the description. Now let's get back to the fucking video. So once Blender is finished rendering, you're going to get a folder with a bunch of separate images. As you can see, they're just pictures of the perfume with a transparent background. And then you want to go to some video editing program. I'm using Premiere Pro. If you don't want to pay for that shit, you can find a bunch of free programs, which can probably do the same thing. They're all pretty easy to use. And then Premiere Pro down here, you got to click on this new item box. You got to click on sequence in here. We got to create a new sequence, which is going to be based on the footage that we just exported. So let's pick 25 FPS. Let's go over here to settings. We're going to change it from 25 FPS to 24 FPS because that's what we exported from Blender with. It's 1080p. So that's good. You're going to click on OK down here. And now you take your folder you select all your frames, you drag and drop it into this timeline, you're going to get a bunch of separate five second images here, just make sure that they play correctly, because sometimes the second half of the animation is going to play first. So you might have to switch them around a little bit like this. For me, it plays fine right now. So now you want to select everything with control a you're going to right click, you're going to click on speed slash duration over here in this big ass menu. And you want to set the duration to 0.001 or the lowest possible value here. This is going to be the duration of each image by default, each image is going to be five seconds long we're going to make it only 0, 0.0, 0, 0, whatever the fuck one second long. And also make sure you check ripple edit because otherwise they're just going to be shortened, but they're going to stay separate. If you check ripple edit, they're all going to be squeezed together. So check that click. Okay. As you can see, now we got our animation playing properly. So now it's moving a little bit more quickly. They're still separate images. So if you want to turn them into a video click again, you select them all, you go right click, you click on nest over here, name nested sequence, whatever, that's fine. And now we just have to place the original video underneath the sequence. So we're going to take the sequence, we're going to lift it up here. And then you find your video in your files. I got it right here. I'm going to drag and drop that into my timeline. I can't do it because it turns out it's 4k. It's not 1080p. So I'm just going to drop it into my library first in my library. I'm going to right click on that. And we're going to click on new sequence from clip. And in this new sequence, you're going to select the footage, press control C to copy it. Then you go back to the first sequence and you paste that shit underneath your animation. And as you can see, the background video is a lot bigger than it should be. So we're going to select that here over here on the left side, you're going to find scale. You want to set that to 50 because it's supposed to be exactly half the size. And there you go. Now when you play the animation, you got your 3d render on top of the background footage, I just made a shitty animation to show you how this stuff works. I'm sure you guys can come up with something better. I'm going to come up with something better off camera as well to show it at the intro to put it on the thumbnail and all that. But now that you know how to do this, it opens up a whole new world of what you can do with 3d animation. And this type of shit is pretty popular these days. It also drives engagement because for example, if you got a product appearing in the city center of whatever city, all of a sudden, anytime somebody sees it, they're going to want to comment and say, Hey, that's my city. Hey, I just just passed there. There was no perfume bottle, ha ha ha, and all this shit. So it's a pretty popular form of advertising. You just want to be able to do something a little bit nicer than this shit that we put together here today. If you want to export this, let's just trim this first. I'm going to press C to activate my cut tool. I'm going to cut right here. I'm going to select this part and delete it. And then you go up here to export over here. You pick a location over here. You pick a name for your file in the video settings. You're going to open this up. You're going to go down here to more and scroll all the way down. You want to make sure your target bit rate is good enough. You don't want 15. You'll probably want something like 20 to make it a little bit nicer. You can even crank it up to something like 50. And then you want to export that down here. And now you got a deliverable file. So that's pretty good. That's all I got for you in this video. Let me know in the comments if this shit worked out for you. There's a bunch of things that tend to go wrong in this process. There's a bunch of different add ons you got to use and they update this shit all the time. So if something doesn't work, let me know in the comments and I can make another video to explain that. But like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what
what you want to see next and make sure you check out the fucking product animation course and i'll see you guys in the next one